Hello there, Mr. Sutton bringing you this lesson on related rates, basic related rates. In this one, we're going to be solving problems involving multiple rates of change. To explain what this related rate stuff is all about, we're going to start right up with a problem. So if z equals 4x cubed plus y squared, they want us to find dy over dt, which is interesting because there's no t's here, when x equals 5, dx over dt equals negative 2, y equals 1 half, and dz over dt equals 10. That's a whole bunch of information. There's a couple things going on here. We have this equation that relates x, y, and z. We also have all of these d something over dt's. This kind of situation is a related rate situation. In a related rate situation, the quantities are all functions of that t there is time. But they're also related to each other. Like you see this equation here has all of the variables together. So in order to solve one of these problems, we have to start with an equation that relates all the original quantities, which in this case they already gave us. It's this z equals equation here. Most of the time we have to generate this equation on our own, but they were nice this time around and just handed it to us. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, they, ask, they want us to find dy over dt. In order to solve for dy over dt, we need an equation that has dy over t in it. To get such an equation, we need to differentiate this equation with respect to time. So we're going to implicitly differentiate everything with respect to time because t is a hidden uh, variable in here. And when we're differentiating with respect to time, that means, as you might uh, surmise by looking at all these rates of change, that all the variables need to get a d something over dt tail, like dy over dt or dx over dt. So let's go ahead and do that. Derivative of z, that's going to be 1, but that has a tail of dz over dt. Derivative of 4x to the third, that's going to be 12x squared. But because these are all being differentiated with respect to time, even x now gets its own special tail of dx over dt. Next, we deal with the y's. So that's going to be 2y, and then we have a tail of dy over dt. So this is a little bit different from the implicit differentiation you're used to, um, but that differentiation from before with, was with respect to x, so you didn't have to do anything special when you differentiated something with an x in it. Because it's with respect to t, now every single variable is going to get a d something over dt tail, unless t is somehow in there, but they never throw t in to the original equation. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, if we need to solve for dy over dt, that means we need to plug in something for all of these other values. So our next step is going to be to plug in all the rates of change and instant function values like this x equals 5 that they gave us. Now I call this instant values because this x equals 5, this is not something you could have just plugged in in the very beginning into the original equation. x only equals 5 at a certain point in time. After you take the derivative of this thing, and you've got it differentiated with respect to time, at that point you're allowed to plug in things that are only true at a certain time, like x equaling 5 and y equaling 1 half. Not before then. There are other values that you're allowed to plug in in the very beginning. Fixed values, like if we're talking about a ladder falling down a wall, the length of the ladder would be a fixed value. But these are instant values. All right, so let's plug those in. dz over dt, that was 10. x, they told us up here, was 5. So we've got 12 times 5 squared. And dx over dt they gave us was negative 2. y they gave us was 1 half. And dy over dt they didn't give us at all. That's what we have to solve for. The next step, as you might guess, is to actually solve for the desired quantity or rate of change. Um, so sometimes they ask you to solve for a rate of change like they are on this problem. Sometimes you have to solve for an instant value like the x or the y. It all depends on the problem. Anywho, let's go ahead and do that. So simplifying things here, this is going to be, let's see, 25 times 12. That's like having uh, 12 quarters. So that's a grand total of 300 cents times negative 2. That's negative 600 plus these cancel out. So that's dy over dt. Adding 600 to the other side, we get dy over dt equals 610. Let's do our first real life problem now. A tick bite creates a circular area of infection if the radius of the area is increasing at 5 millimeters and growing at a rate of 2 millimeters per hour. At what rate is the infected area increasing? All right, well, uh, pause the video and see if you can try this one on your own. There's, there's a, a formula you could...
bring out right away from your past geometry class. And that formula, unpausing the video here, that formula is area equals pi r squared. Uh, this is a good formula because they're asking for the rate of change of area and they're giving you the rate of change of radius. So this has everything you want in it. Let's go ahead and implicitly differentiate this now. So that's dA over dt equals 2 pi r dr over dt. Now we have to find the various things that we're missing. We're looking for dA over dt, um, so we need r and dr over dt. r itself is going to be 5 millimeters, and dr over dt, that's the rate of the radius which it's growing, that's going to be 2 millimeters per hour. Plugging that in now, that's going to be, let's see, uh, 20 pi, um, which comes out to roughly, if you plug that in the calculator, about 62.83. Um, now watch your units on these. This is the rate of change of area, so that's going to be 62.83 millimeters squared, that's area, per hour. Um, so just be careful with those units. And we'll actually take that out to three decimals, so 62.832. We'll do one more for this lesson. A spherical balloon, very pretty one, is inflated with helium at a rate of 90 pi cubic feet per minute. How fast is the balloon's radius increasing when the radius is three feet? So pause the video, come up with a formula, imp diff, and uh, see how the rest of it goes. So the formula we should be using, we're talking about the volume of the balloon if we're talking about cubic units. So let's use the volume formula. We've got volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Let's imp diff that now. So that's going to be dv over dt equals, multiply 3 by this, so that's going to be 4 pi r squared dr over dt. Now we're solving for dr over dt, how fast is the radius increasing? Um, so we need to figure out dv over dt and r. This is the, dv over dt is the rate of change of the volume. They gave us that, that's 90 pi cubic feet per minute. The radius they gave us also, that's 3 feet. Let's plug those in. So we got 90 pi equals 4 times pi times 3 squared dr dt. Over here now we've got 36 pi. We're going to divide 90 pi by that. You could use the calculator, um, but the pi's here are going to cancel, and you can f divide each of these by 18, so that's going to reduce to 5 over 2, or 2.5. Now what are the units on this going to be? They're asking how fast is the balloon's radius increasing? That's just a length measurement, so that's going to be feet per minute, 2.5 feet per minute. Just one more quick note on units. Even if you didn't realize that radius increasing should be feet per minute, uh, we could have figured this out with what they gave us. This 90 pi was cubic feet per minute, and you're dividing that by, when you plug this 3 feet in here, this is going to be square feet. Cubic feet divided by square feet is just single feet, and then we have the per minute in there. Anyway, that's all we have time for. Until next time, this is Mr. Sutton signing off.